watching TV 27, WHTM, Harrisburg. From Harrisburg's leading news station, serving Lancaster, Lebanon, and York, here's Rick Wagner, Craig Mace on sports, and Chuck Rhodes with weather. This is Channel 27 News. If you are getting more colds than you normally do, chances are you could be spending too much time in a sick building. Experts say too many buildings have poor ventilation systems and the indoor pollutants can make you ill. Suzanne LaFranchi talked to a man today who diagnoses sick buildings. Sick building syndrome strikes any building where indoor pollution can accumulate to a level where it creates an unhealthy environment for those in it. The pollutants vary. Inorganic gases, oxides of nitrogen, sulfates, ammonia, then there's formaldehyde, organic chemicals and vapors, there's fibers, there's cigarette smoke, there's bacteria and fungi. Chemist Gary Robertson studies sick buildings. He says there are three major causes of the syndrome. Lack of ventilation, poor filtration, and the accumulation of dirt and filth inside the ductwork. You'll see the tremendous amount of dirt that's collected on inside the system. And all the air going out of the building goes down that system, gets contaminated by this dirt, it goes through poor quality filters, and it's then delivered back to everybody in the building. Robertson says poor filtration systems are the major cause of sickness at the workplace. 50% of all office absenteeism is due to upper respiratory complaints of coughs, colds, influenza, and allergies. And an awful lot of those are directly caused by indoor pollution. The chemist says the most famous example of sick building syndrome is when Legionnaire's disease caused 29 deaths at the Bellevue Stratford in Philadelphia. 35% of the buildings we've studied over the last two years have no fresh air whatsoever. And everyone is living with 100% recycled air. And in that environment, every form of pollution is bound to increase. The cure for sick building syndrome, experts say, is to conduct regular inspections of the air handling units and check filters for quality and cleanliness. Internal sections of the duct should be routinely examined and the air should be analyzed for contaminants. You can also have cleaner air at home. Robertson says periodically vacuum on your air ducts and buy a good air filter. He says the investment will be worth it. Suzanne LaFranchi, Channel 27 News, Harrisburg. Robertson says cigarette smoke is often blamed for indoor pollution, but he says many other invisible pollutants can be just as guilty. WHTM Harrisburg. From Harrisburg's leading news station, serving Lancaster, Lebanon, and York, here's Rick Wagner, Craig Mace on sports, and Chuck Rhodes with weather. This is Channel 27 News. Cigarette smoke is one of the indoor pollutants we can see, but it is not the only dangerous thing in the air. In fact, experts say far too many buildings have such lousy ventilation that they trap all sorts of indoor pollutants that can make us sick. And if we remove the grill, you'll see the tremendous amount of dirt that's collected on inside the system. And all the air going out of the building goes down that system, gets contaminated by this dirt, it goes through poor quality filters, and it's then delivered back to everybody in the building. Robertson, who diagnoses so-called sick buildings, recommends regular inspections and cleaning of air units and filters. 